G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Wednesday morning here in Australia, market still just hanging around that kind of $2.7 trillion mark, under ever so slightly at the moment. So a bit of kind of sideways movement, movement but Bitcoin dominance continues to drop. Are we going to see Bitcoin dominance under this 40% level? Uh, things are getting very interesting, like, look, sorry, not like, look, the more Bitcoin drops, the more it is that we're sort of going into an alt season. And it doesn't mean Bitcoin can't go up and surge. Bitcoin absolutely can, but the altcoins will start to rocket. And I mean, just have a look at what Ethereum's doing. You know, Bitcoin is stuck around this, you know, kind of 50, you know, seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine thousand dollar range, and Ethereum is starting to moon. We'll get to the Ethereum chart and have a look very, very shortly. Now there is a bit of volume there, so again, the dips being bought, people are buying in. Bitcoin price, as I said, it's under you know fifty-eight, sort of fifty-nine thousand. It's barely hanging on to fifty-seven thousand at the moment. Looking, it could go up. We'll have to wait and see. But gas prices for ETH are astronomical. And again, we'll have a look at the uh, ETH chart very shortly and it'll probably give you an indication of exactly what's going on. All right, so again, the market's up ever so slightly, nothing too crazy. So there's going to be gains and we can see there's some obvious losses. Uh, ADA getting hit pretty hard at the moment, but I get the feeling like ADA is probably a buy at the moment because it's when everyone's kind of out, like I said, and just thinking, nah, it's done for, it can't make a comeback. And a lot of good coins, not so much shit coins, but good coins, that's generally when they're getting ready to fire. But again, as always, none of this is financial advice. This is just personal opinion, you know, from someone who's been in the space a little while. All right, so let's have a look at the winners and losers. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Stacks, a very nice move. 20% Shiba Inu starting to make a comeback. We looked at that story yesterday. You know, the Shiba Inu whales poured billions into SHIB, so they're starting to pump the price again. Luna starting to make a nice move. I'm happy with this. I bought some Luna a while ago. I wasn't sure if it was going to work out well. So far it has, and it looks like uh, I hopefully got on the right train, which is good. Uh, still got a ways to go before I really make a whole lot of money from it, but at least it's making a move. Nexo, look, you know, there's definitely some green there. Not a whole lot, though. A couple of double-digit movers, which is good. Then we've got a couple of okay single-digit movers, and then we're really just getting into the low single-digit movers. Any gain's a good gain, even Aave. I've been speaking about Aave and banging the table. Look at Matic as well. I really like these projects. I think it's just a matter of time until they get the next leg up. I think the whole market's going to have at least another leg up, if not like another two or three legs. Again, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out though. All right, so we can see the gainers. What about the losers though? What hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours? All right, Zcash, Gala, and again, you know, Decentraland, Engine Wrap. So a lot of the Metaverse coins, maybe they are starting to stall out. I'm not sold on that just yet. We'll have to wait and see. Again, they pump so hard that it could be just part of a healthy sort of correction for the market. Again, people are going to take profits. Uh, and I, you know, fully expect uh, some of the coins that I get in, like uh, Wax, uh, Gala, and sandbox down here to likely you know lose me a little bit of money for a while because you know it's just really hard to exactly time it so i had to get a a position in them so yeah again i expect that they'll you know go down for a little while but eventually they'll start to pump back up particularly when we get that kind of blow off top which i do think is coming i, I think it comes later but I think everything will have its sort of time to shine again. And I just didn't want to simply have no position in them. But we can see, look, some, you know, one double digit loser, Zcash. And again, it pumped pretty hard a little while ago, a while ago on the news that it was going from proof of uh, work to proof of stake. So it's having a bit of a healthy correction. And yeah, then we got some, you know, single digit kind of losses there. The graph. Uh, apparently some whales were buying up a little bit of graph so that's interesting that it is down but look single digit losses they're not the worst it's when you get those double digit losses they really start to hurt but if you have constant single digit losses day after day after day then that can hurt all right let's go to the bitcoin chart and have a look all right so again i mean you know these fib retracement levels they just almost married up perfect 
perfectly. The 0.618, you know, down to the 0.5, it's, you know, the golden pocket. It's a good place to buy things on a retracement. It doesn't always play out, but gee, this was nearly perfect. I mean, it came down a little bit lower. And again, look at Bitcoin. It almost perfectly, if not perfectly, touched that old all-time high here. And again, now look at the upside from this move. The $88,000 level almost perfectly marries up with the 1.618 level. So again, this is really the target and it married up with that uh, pennant that was forming here. So again, you know, I do like TA. I don't live and die by it because it's right until it's wrong. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's just the way it goes. But it is marrying up perfectly. So I really do think this $88,000 level is something that we should be able to get close to. But look, there's people thinking that kind of seventy-five to 80000 will be the top. I wouldn't be surprised if we get up there and have some big kind of massive sort of 50% correction. Again, I was saying uh, sort of 70 up through to sort of 85000 uh, and have a big 40, 50% correction that brings us basically all the way back to around about here. But then we get a good v-shaped recovery and start to make another high now again never financial advice i'm not saying that is what's going to happen that's just my sneaky suspicion i don't think eighty-eight thousand will be the top i think it will just be a sort of a mid-term cycle top before we go back up but again we'll have to wait and see we don't know uh, that that's exactly what's going to happen. That's just my gut feeling. Again, this market is going to want to shake out as many people as it can. So just be prepared. Again, you know, we might not even make it to that 88,000 because there's a lot of people kind of expecting that and the 100 plus thousand. So I think we get, again, somewhere between sort of 70 to 80, uh, sort of 5,000 and we get a 50% correction, like I said, shaking everyone out, bringing us down to somewhere around about here before we then start to make our way back up. But yeah, time will tell uh, whether my thesis is right. All right, just a couple of stories I wanna have a look at. All right, another uh, hack, unfortunately. So, you know, it always seems to be DeFi projects, but that's just the way it is. DeFi, uh, you know, brings in all the yields. So they're the ones that's re that are really gonna be targeted. So 30 million this time, which is not too bad. I mean, we've seen, you know, projects robbed of hundreds of millions, but you know, in the end, someone's lost that 30 million. So 30 million in wrapped ETH and Matic have been stolen from DeFi project Moon X. Now, Moon X haven't really come out and said uh, too much about it at the moment, uh, other than you know they want to speak to <laughs> the hacker to try and you know work something out and you know turn a, a a legit hacker into a white hat hat hacker, which is someone who you know just shows them the error of their ways teaches them and then gets a bounty uh, <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see you know this hacker could turn into a white hat hacker which a few have because they've been caught out and they've found out where the funds have been taken so then all of a sudden they're like oh, i was always going to give it back so <laughs> there it is but yeah time will tell but this is why you just got to be careful in this space and particularly in DeFi, there's just yeah, it's the place that they go after to be hacked because there's a lot of value tied up in DeFi. Like we looked at yesterday, was it a hundred, uh, you know, billion dollars or something? I can't even remember off the top of my head. And total value locked up uh, in just Ethereum DeFi. So they are the places that tend to get hacked. All right, Grayscale have come out and launched a Solana Trust. So you know this leads to the legitimacy of Solana and the you know, the possibility of it being long-term. I mean, Grayscale have an Ethereum classic trust and not a lot's happening uh, there. But also what you need to remember about this is that generally Grayscale, they don't really sell too often. They literally just buy and hold most of the time. I'm sure they sell here and there, but generally they're looking to just buy the dips. So good chance that Solana is gonna be around for the long haul but it is for credited and trusted investors now. So that's a little bit annoying. It basically means, you know, you gotta have a whole stack of money. You're either, again, a rich individual or an institution being able to invest in this. But they said the new trust will solely and passively invest in Solana. So again, passively, that means they're not just buying all the time. They are really waiting for good times to buy, you know, good dips and things like that. But this is big for Solana and again, helps to, you know, legitimize this you know project is likely as well not i wouldn't say likely but at least 
possibly having uh, you know a long lifespan but you know things change very quickly in this space we'll have to wait and see all right Invesco launches a Bitcoin spot ETP with German stock market operator now the good thing about this excuse me is that it's backed by physical Bitcoin this is what we want now there are already some spot Bitcoin ETFs around the world uh, and now you have ETPs which are very very similar you know minor sort of differences but this is another reason why Bitcoin is being bought up off the market there is going to come a point where there's going to be so little bitcoin out there that the price really will just have to you know rocket we know there's other institutions out there such as micro strategy and now we've got a nation state in el salvador you know they're buying up the bitcoin you know when there's dips and i mean micro strategy they're just buying all the time and there's about 900 Bitcoin being bought every, uh, sorry, being mined every day. The miners aren't really selling much. So then whatever's left is generally getting bought up by a whole stack of other companies. So very little of that Bitcoin is making to the market. Hence why, you know, my personal recommendation is 30% of whatever you're putting into cryptocurrency should be into bitcoin it's the granddaddy of them all it's kind of the safest one it's been around the longest and it really is just a good store of value still super volatile and again that's not financial advice that's just my personal opinion but that's what i i do i've got 30 percent in bitcoin uh probably another 30 ish percent in ethereum and then the last sort of 30 ish percent of my portfolio is you know a mixture of a whole different sort of stack of altcoins but i have mixed it up i've got some DeFi plays in there i've got some metaverse plays in there smart contracts and all sorts of things and so that is how i diversify i'm mainly in crypto i do have some stock i don't have a lot i plan to buy some more stocks but you know stock is you know the stock market is a general sort of generally safe market but look even you know that's propped up by the government and things like that so they stop printing you know money there's a good chance the stock market gets hit really hard but the scary thing is you know cryptocurrency will be hit even harder but it'll most likely rebound quicker once things you know start to turn around so that's what we need to keep in mind all right grayscale they have done a 500 million dollar uh senior node raise uh very similar not very similar i would say basically exactly the same as micro strategy so they want to accelerate the growth in different initiatives within cryptocurrencies so we can see see down here senior note offering uh raising 500 million dollars and yeah, galaxy digital just continues to grow from strength to strength and again they're not going to do this if they really think everything's about to go in a bear market well, actually, then again, maybe they could because they know that they want that 500 million ready to take advantage of things uh, at the bottom. But really, they don't invest in coins so much. Galaxy Digital, they, don't get me wrong, they've got Bitcoin on their balance sheet and things like that. They're more investing in early stage products, uh, projects and things like that. They do end up with coins, don't get me wrong, but they're, n they're not so much out there buying cryptocurrencies from the markets they and don't get me wrong i'm not saying they don't buy any they do but again they're more div, uh, investing in you know startup projects and things like that but 500 million will go quite a long way so we'll have to keep an eye on that now crypto.com uh, and silvergate are enabling institutions to buy and sell crypto with usd so again this is there needs to be on ramps for you know institutions as well as people but crypto.com you know they are growing from strength to strength they had this big pump early on in the cycle and then they basically fell right off the radar and it all got really really quiet and now they're pumping again and that's what you need to remember with a lot of your cryptos if you believe in them they can have periods where they are dead quiet for ages you won't hear anything from them for months and when i when i say months i mean months it'll feel like nothing's going on in the projects you know not so much dead but it's just never going to go anywhere and then out of nowhere it will have a crazy pump again like Aave, that's the one i'm you know banging the table about yes eth you know fees are high but they're they've already merged over to avalanche as well and i do believe ethereum 2.0 will get itself sorted and Aave, it is my blue chip 
when it comes to the DeFi sector. So that is the same thing. They're really quiet at the moment, but I do think they're going to have their moment to shine again. And anyway, moving back onto crypto.com. Now they have been working with Circle uh, using the USD stablecoin. So again, another sign of strength for USDC. It really is getting adopted all over the place. Now what I want to show you is this. This is the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart. And this what's this is what makes me think things are going to get ready to fire up and go crazy. So again, this is over its lifetime. We can see here was a peak and it started to use that as support. So this was kind of resistance, but it was support there. Uh, and then it's been uh, used as support over here. But again, I showed this ages ago. Ethereum has formed this kind of bull flag or a bull pennant, whatever you want to call it. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to play out exactly like this, but it was wedging, 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 had a false breakout, but it came back and retested it, which is usually super bullish. But again, I reckon this is manipulation here. And look at this. This is perfect. This is the W that we talk about. So we got the W comes down, comes up, comes down. And now we have that breakout. It sets in a new high. Now it's come back down and look at this, it's retesting, retesting and starting to break out. Now look where Ethereum is, it's getting ready to break out. And so basically what can happen from here, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm just saying it could happen. Sorry, got to stop that. Move. If we take this, and do something like this. Look at where Ethereum could possibly go. Now this is against Bitcoin. It could go to a tenth of what Bitcoin's price is. So again, if Bitcoin's at sixty thousand, that takes Ethereum up to six thousand. If Bitcoin, you know, goes even higher, then obviously Ethereum goes even higher. Now that doesn't even get it to new all-time highs. That's just the target for this move to get to a basically a six of Bitcoin's price. So that's a pretty good move considering Ethereum's only at 4,000, sort of 600 right now. So it's about a $1,400 move thereabouts. Again, Bitcoin's a little bit under 60,000, but very, very interesting. Then imagine that Ethereum goes on to, you know, break into new all-time highs. What kind of price does that take it to? So again, that's the W formation that we get. So it sets in a low and then it starts to break back up and you need it to break its old all-time high. Now this line wasn't exact, but thereabouts. Now we can see it just keeps coming back and basically retesting that line and now it's broken out. Now it is right on the cusp of having a full legit breakout and we just have to wait and see whether this is going to play out. Now, last but not least, I want to show you something that really a lot of people disagree with it and they get upset when you talk about this. But if you want to know how the cryptocurrency market's going to do, come over and check out the S&P 500. It's based on the stocks. If stocks are doing well and going up, cryptocurrency will. If stocks are doing real bad and going down, cryptocurrency is going to go down. Now, it doesn't mean they are in perfect correlation but they have a high correlation. Now, I showed this the other day. We saw the stocks come down here and I said, look, I think they could come down lower and I wouldn't be surprised if they came back down and retested. And what's happened? Stocks have tumbled again and come down and they are very close to here. Now, what I'm keeping an eye out for is whether they can hold this line. Basically, we'll go up to here. It could come a little bit lower. We'll just use the actual candle. Hereabouts, I want to see Will the S&P stay above 4,538? Because if we go below, now it could, you know, have a bit of a kind of a fake out to the low side and then have a quick V recovery. I don't think I'm going to come way down here. But if we have a close below this and then another close below this, then things are going to get bad. I think it's definitely possible that we're going to come down to somewhere around about here. Could get quite nasty. Uh... And that is not going to be good for crypto. Crypto is not going to pump if, yeah, the stock market somehow managed to lose that much. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I think, you know, there's definitely possibilities that maybe we sort of come down to around about here. But then we just got to look for the next levels, which is down kind of around about here and then around about here. And then again, you know, we're getting down to here. I think that's unlikely. I mean, that's, you know, 
really bad but this is the level that i'm watching for again not exactly because you know you can grab this and move it up ever so slightly you know to the top of these kind of wicks so just somewhere thereabouts can this hold and will it bounce from here and make its way back up if it does super bullish for crypto if it doesn't not good for crypto crypto is going to get shellacked I don't care what anyone says about the correlation. You know, rah, rah, there's very little correlation. Negative, high correlation. It's just not an exact correlation. There are periods where crypto can do well and the stocks don't do well. And then there's periods where basically they travel almost in tandem. So these are the things that I keep a look out for. And the Dixie as well, you know, the dollar. See how the dollar's doing. If the dollar's doing really well, generally cryptocurrency and the stock market aren't doing really well. But sometimes they can still move in tandem, you know, upwards together. But more more times than not, if the stocks and crypto are doing well, the Dixie's not. But if the Dixie starts to do well, stocks and cryptos won't. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another, hopefully you're all on that game train, and I'll see you next time.